Welcome to teach to learns Integrated Algebra Review Course. We will be preparing you for the Regents exam through a series of videos that go over the basic concepts and some more complicated concepts that you need in order to succeed on the Regents exam. Today we'll be talking about some simple concepts that you need to know in order to understand the larger concepts. So why don't we get started right away by discussing what algebra is. Algebra has two main concepts in it, constants and variables. Constants equal values that do not change, and variables equal values that vary. And to not make it any more complicated, an expression is a combination of constants and variables that represents a larger value. And expressions are used in equations to figure out the relation between different expressions. So let's figure out what the different types of equations there are. So first, you have equations of equality, which have two equal, well, an n equal sign between two expressions. Then you have equations of inequality, which have an uh, n equal sign between two expressions. And finally, you have equations of approximation, which have a little squiggly uh, equal sign to represent approximately equal to. And that is what algebra is. Now we will discuss sets and subsets. Sets are a collection of elements. They are often depicted with a capital letter. So the letter A represents a set in this instance. And in order to figure out what is within the set, you use brackets to represent the contents of the set. So Let's get our little parentheses there. And so the set of all numbers between 3 and 9, which are odd, is represented as so. Now, in order to represent that 3 is an element of A, you simply use the letter E. So you have 3 is an element of A. On the other hand, if you want to represent that something is not an element of A, you use an E with a line through it. Not too complicated there. So 50 is not an element of A. The order in which you represent or present the numbers in a set has zero relevance. So A can be represented as such with the exact same meaning as before. It is simply the values which are contained that matter. Now, subsets are sets that contain all of the values that are contained in your set, but not all, but not all of them, sorry. Uh, so here is a subset of a. So all of the numbers in B are in A, but all of the numbers in A are not in B, which makes B a subset of A. The next quick concept we need to discuss in order for us to be ready for the rest of the concepts in integrated algebra are replacement sets. A replacement set is all the possible values, contains all the possible values for the variable. And if you're talking about the letter X, it is called a domain. And if you're talking about the letter Y, or the variable Y, it is called a range. So a replacement set has all the possible values of a variable. 
So for example, if I tell someone that my age is represented by the letter P, and my age is any number between 12 and 100, then the replacement set for the variable P is between 12 and 100. Now let's discuss all the possible uses of variables in mathematics. You have variables that function as placeholders and this is probably the most common uh, usage of a variable. So for example x plus 2 equals 5 and x is a placeholder for the number 3. The second is to represent change and this is kind of the concept they were talking about in the beginning that variables are useful for uh, depicting change. So in the equation x plus y equals 0, x and y are no constant values so you need to uh, use variables in order to show that as you move along the graph you have different values for x and y which is why it is a variable of change and if that made absolutely no sense to you hopefully it will by the time we're done with this set of videos. Uh, the third concept that it is used for is formulas and this is probably another common uh, usage of it that you've already seen such as length times width equals area. Um, again, they are, these are, there is no constant length or no constant width that you can use within uh, each problem that you do, but you always know that the length times the width equals the area, and that is why a variable, which has a meaning here, but not a constant value, is very useful for formulas. And the f final concept is a uh, concept that is very popular in mathematical theory, um, and that is for behavior and behavior of numbers, not behavior of your classmates. Uh, so x times 1 equals x. Now, to most people, they'll be like, well, duh. But what this means in mathematical theory is that it is a representation of the identity property, identity property of multiplication, that any number multiplied by 1 is still x. And that covers our little intro to variables. So let us quickly review numbers, both positive and negative. So a term for both of those together is signed numbers. Kind of silly, but true. Signed numbers. So you have the negative sign and the positive sign. But as you know, there is absolutely no convention in which you must use the positive sign so you can just say 5 you do not need to say positive 5 with the positive sign up front it is assumed that a number without the sign is positive so let us err on the side of convention there uh, when so a quick review of sign numbers a negative number as in negative 5 now is the opposite of a positive number that is the exact same without the sign. So you have negative 5 is the opposite of 5, negative 10 is the opposite of 10, and so on and so forth. And the final thing we need to review for sign numbers is its application with parentheses. So let us get our marker here. If you have negative 4 within parentheses with a negative on the outside, that makes it a positive 4. So let us quickly make a table here that will tell us what the value is. Instead of giving examples, we'll quickly just go through the signs. So if you have a negative and a positive, it is a negative value. If you have a negative and a negative, it is a positive value. A positive and a negative makes a negative value. And a positive and a positive makes a positive value. And this will translate into multiplication with negative numbers and division with negative numbers. So that covers our little quick review of signed numbers. Now let us talk about convention in algebra with multiplication. 
So to write that anything is multiplied by something else, you can use three different formats. The first is three period two or number period two or number period variable, whatever. Uh, it all means the same. It means that it is multiplied by. The second method is with parentheses, a little bit cleaner. You have three times two with all parentheses with no actual sign uh, or operation to say that is clearly written out. And the final method is only useful if you have uh, variables with it. So x times 3 can be depicted by 3x. This obviously does not work with numbers as 3 next to 2 is 32 and not 3 times 2. But hopefully you knew that. Now let us move on to expressions. And we briefly spoke about expressions in the beginning when we talked about what algebra is. But now let's talk about them in more in depth. Expressions do not have any signs within them, as in an equal sign, an unequal sign, a approximation sign, or any of the inequality signs that we will talk about later. Uh, so an expression is basically the left or right hand side of an equation, but that's kind of like a colloquial way of saying so. Uh, the terms within expressions are separated by a plus or minus sign. So here's an example. 3x plus 4y equals 33. And let's not solve this right now, but let us talk about, let's name the elements of this. So 3x is a term, 4y is a term, and 33 is a term. Now, the entire left-hand side, and why don't we use a different color for that? Uh, I was using green, blue. The entire left-hand side is one expression, and this is another expression. So without the equal sign, both sides separately become expressions. Together right now, they're actually an equation, but we were trying to talk about terms there, so that was that. The final, uh, I guess, jargon that you need to know in order to understand algebra and in order to stay up to date with what we're saying is numerical coefficients. So each variable some variables have a number in front of them, and that number is the numerical coefficient. So if we were to use the color red there to, to circle it, 3 and 4 are the numerical coefficients. Now, if you have just a number without any coefficient in front of it, it is understood to have a coefficient of 1. And within mathematics, it is not necessary to put that one there because it is assumed to be there unless anything else is there. And that covers our little review of conventions within algebra. Now we have two more concepts left for today. The first concept being divisibility. And you've all learned uh, division already, but in in within algebra, uh, if anything is evenly divisible by something, that means that there is a remainder of 0. So you all know what a remainder is. So let's talk about 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3 with no remainder. But 13 divided by 5 is equal to 2 with a remainder of 3. And now we all know that we would use decimals to represent the actual number. But in terms of divisibility, the only evaluation you do is if there's an integer quantity that is the result of a division uh, of two numbers. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, which means that 15 is divisible by 5. And another way you can say that is that 5 is a factor of 15. So a factor is evenly divisible into a larger number. So if factors of 20, for example, and this keeps moving, but we'll follow it along, factors of 20 would be 4, 5, 2, 10, uh, 1, 20, right? All those are factors of 20. Now, within divisibility, you quickly will pick up on prime numbers and composite numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that are divisible solely by themselves and 1. So, an example of a prime number is 13, probably a popular prime number, and you can only divide 13 by itself or 1 in order to evenly divide by 13 or 1. So that makes it a prime number. And the number 20, again, is a 
composite number because you cannot uh, you can divide by more than just itself and one so numbers four and five easily are uh, test cases which prove that it is a composite number so the easiest way to prove that number is composite is by finding a number that is not itself or one that it is divisible by divisible by uh, all right cool now so the final thing we'll talk about today are inequalities and intervals so in e qualities um, all right so that is a greater than sign that is a less than sign that is a greater than or equal to sign and that is a less than or equal to sign and you all knew that but the thing that might not be so familiar with you is the application of that within intervals so let us write all the possible intervals out so you have one is less than x which is less than five you can have one or any number for that matter is less than or equal to x which is less than five you can have one is less than x which is less than or equal to five or you could have one is less than and equal to or equal to x which is less than or equal to five and those are all the possible interval notations that you can have and let's quickly review what each of those actually mean so the first one and we'll make a little mark next to it with black why not uh, is 1 is less than x which is less than 5 so that means that the interval contains all numbers between 1 and 5 not including 1 and 5 themselves the second one right here is all numbers between 1 and 5 only including number 1 from the outsets the third one is 1 is less than x which is less than or equal to 5 which means that all numbers between 1 and 5 are included within this interval besides the number 1 itself or including 5 and not including 1. Um, and the final one is the nice and clean one that it includes all numbers between 1 and 5 including 1 and 5 themselves. And that is interval notation for you. That completes our quick review of basic concepts that are necessary in order to succeed on the integrated algebra regions.